Hey guys, so today we're just going to make a couple objects here. We have a gate object, as you can see, um, red and blue. We're going to have two different types of gates, as well as two colored keys to unlock the respective gates. Um, as far as the objects go, we have the gates are, um, they have a parent of walls so that they do act like a wall when they are not destroyed. That's what we want. Um, and that's what I was talking about with inheritance. It's very powerful, so that's very important that that's set. With this, we're just going to have an object key red, but we are going to do something interesting here, which is we're going to have the blue key's parent be the red key. So that means the red key is going to be the only key that we write most of the code into. Um, and then later, a little bit later on, we're going to get into writing some AI for a spider enemy, and that's going to be pretty interesting. So uh, we did move the second room up a little bit, as you can see, so we can test it first, and we put the walls here so... Just just make it however you want, but we want a good testing ground, and this seemed pretty good to me. Okay, so we want the keys to unlock the gates, but, and by unlock I mean destroy. You could do other things with it, but that's how we're going to do it. Um, we are going to use an alarm, because I like to offset the um, steps just to save some CPU resources. It's not the most important thing. Um, we're also going to set a color variable. This is to differentiate the two keys, because like I said, blue key is going to essentially copy the exact code of the red key by inheritance. So, let's create our alarm. Don't forget the first thing we do is we set the alarm. There you go. Alright, we're going to do a collision test. So, it's going to be our standard rectangle collision. B box right, B box top. Object player is what we want to collide with. We have, these are zero again. Um, is not equal to no one. So if we collide with the player, we're going to want to do some logic here. So I'm going to introduce the switch statement if you guys haven't used it. It's pretty interesting. So um, switch color. We're going to be switching over color. That's essentially what that means. Um, we do want to indent our brackets, as well as, I'm going to start being more consistent with semicolons here. So case red, case essentially means if the color is, and then you put red, uh, don't forget that there. If the color is red, we're going to want to set a variable, let's say um, gate object equals I think it's, let me just check what we have. Object gate red. We're essentially telling it that um, the object we're going to destroy is the red gate, if we have a red key. Uh, don't forget break. This essentially means that we're going to stop this um, this execution and not go through the rest of the switch. You don't want to go through the rest of the switch. Uh, case blue. Gate object equals object gate blue. Ooh. break there and we're going to do a default default means that if we don't run into either of those two cases we're going to execute this um, we just want to do this just in case we forget to set a color on one of the keys which obviously that'll be an error but we want it to gracefully make an error so uh, we'll set that there we do need to define that variable bang um, now we also want to destroy, now we want to destroy the gate essentially. So we're going to use a with. With means that whatever you pass um, into the with as the variable, it's going to execute the following code as if it was being executed by that variable, uh, which is an object. So we'll use gate object. And we will do an instance destroy. Simple as that. Very easy. And then we need to destroy the key too, so let's do that. Um, and I did make a sound earlier, I haven't shown you that yet, but ooh, let me go there. SND key, we're going to use that, so we'll play that sound before we destroy. Alright, let's do a little bit of commenting here. Set appropriate gate 
true. Um, there we go. Okay, that's simple enough. Let's test it. Oh, that worked well. Okay. And the spider's just going to sit there. We haven't put any brains in him yet. Oh, the blue key didn't work. That's really odd. So let's check that out. Oh, well we didn't set a create. What you can do is create a, or put in a create event. And this doesn't ruin the inheritance. In fact, it just ensures that the red um, create event isn't written into blue. We're going to want our own here. But you do need to put all of the same code that you want it to be executed as if it were the red key. So we're going to set the alarm zero still. Um, and instead of red, we're going to set the color equal to blue. And that'll work just fine. Let's just test it for proof. Interestingly enough, somebody uh, mentioned or was wondering why I was using Game Maker 8 instead of Studio. It is because I prefer Game Maker 8. Um, and the reason for that is because the execution time for compiling is just way quicker. It might Game Maker Studio might be much less of a resource hog, but Game Maker 8 is definitely quicker to develop with, at least for what we're doing. Simple, simple tutorials and things like that. Um, and most of the code is the same across both, so it really doesn't matter. Okay, so that's done. That was cool. Um, it worked re really well. So we're going to make some spider uh, AI here. So we're going to want a alarm because the alarm is going to act as the thing that tells it what to do. The brains, again. Wow. I'm sure with those. Alarm zero. Uh, let's set it every 30 frames. We're also going to have a couple variables. Uh, move. We'll set that to zero. Actually, let's set that to one. This will tell us uh, if we're ready to move or not, something we can toggle if we need to have him rest a little bit. So let's set those. Okay, we're gonna get into a little bit of randomness here, so. um, Yeah, let's do that. We're going to use the built-in variable direction. Uh, we're not going to use it to actually move with Game Maker's movement engine. We're going to make our own, but we are going to use this to conserve on memory. Direction equals... Again, this function is, should seem familiar. We've used it before. It gives you an angle, but if you give it two sets of points. Point direction, object player... And we're going to add some randomness here, because true spiders don't always walk perfectly towards the person or anything like that. They're going to walk a little bit skewed. So we're going to do minus 20 plus random 40. What that does is it gives us a range from 20 degrees uh, subtracted from this angle up to 20 degrees added from this angle, because 40 is going to obviously go past the negative 20 by 20 degrees. So that balances it out perfectly. And then we are going to decide whether or not to move. Let's do this. Round random three. Is e less than or equal to one. We're going to use a round there to give us a whole number because random does by default give us a non-integer, but we want an integer in this case. And we could do it without round, but in some cases you just want it to be cleaner because if we wanted to put say equals one if we were testing for that specific case it would be a one out of four chance because round can give or random can give you zero so but we're just going to keep it like that and set move if that is true oh, i forgot my semicolon there and yeah, let's set move to one if that is false because it's going to be false more often than not and we want him moving. Uh, it just seems to make sense. So that is set, but we are going to use a step event here because we have to make him actually move. So if move, 
equal. Okay. Let's go this way. If move equals one, and collision again. We want to make sure he's not colliding with where he's moving. Um, but we also need to find out where he's moving towards. There's a nifty function called lengthder. So let's set. Um, We're going to set some temporary variables. I'll show you why. Length of x gives you the position um, in for the x coordinate uh, given a length and a direction. It's going to essentially it uses sine, cosine, and tangent functions to determine this, but it saves us the work of having to do it ourselves, which is nice. Uh, two, we're going to use direction, obviously. And let's do the same for y. Again, there's two different functions here, so you want to make sure you use like their y for this. And that's it's a great function. It comes in handy so many times. You're gonna to want to know that. Um, so let's use collision rectangle here. B box left. Don't forget to add this y and this x to the, all of these. Alright, um, yeah, we're going to check for the wall. And then we're going to, if we are, this, is, this else is essentially saying if we're trying to move, but we're colliding with the, uh, with the wall, let's not, let's stop trying to move. Um, but if we are ready to move, let's do it. So x plus positive equal to distance x. Uh, distance y, or y positive equal to distance y. Okay, let's try that out. Yep. I'm just double checking. Okay. And you know what? We don't have um, anything boxing the spider into the wall, so we are going to do that because it's just easier. Well, let's do it that way. That's fine. Because otherwise he's going to run out of the screen, because if he is moving, uh, he, we're going to have him move randomly, short, very shortly here, so we want him not escaping. Put that blue key in. Let's try it out. So that's awesome. You can see the spider is moving towards the player even when he's not in the box, but that's fine. Um, let's see what happens now. So, yeah, he's not moving very fast or very aggressively, but. He's coming along. Oof, we don't have any damage being done yet when he hits us, but that's fine. Do that quite easily. Do it here. Again, all we're doing is putting in some collision for the player.
I'm just resend this start here. There's actually a better way to do this um, collision because we have, as you've noticed, we have um, spike here, which also collides with player, and we have our own sort of logic for that. What it does when it does collide. Um, I think actually that was put in the player, interestingly enough. So here we go. So play appropriate death sound if we die, um, and then check hazard here. We did have check hazard, that's right, so we could always put it in there, why not? Object spike, you know what? Perfect. So since it's looking for spike, rather than do this, let's do something else. Let's make him a parent of object spike. Perfect. And all we're going to inherit from that is the name Spike for collisions. It's not going to overwrite any code because all the code was was uh, rewritten in Spider. So Spider's not going to behave like a Spike except for the fact that he hurts the player just like a Spike would, which is perfect. Let's check that out. Let's bait him. Oh, oh perfect. Look at that. Oh, now we are, we're in a bad spot here. See if we can get around him. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. And in the next video, I promise we will finally wrap this game up. We're just going to put in some uh, finishing screens and things like that. All right. Thanks for watching.